The missing five-year-old Hawkins County, Tennessee girl Summer Wells, was three feet tall and weighed 40 pounds, with blonde hair and blue eyes, she was last seen wearing gray pants, a pink shirt and was possibly barefoot. 5.30 p.m. on June 15, 2021 Summer Wells was planting succulents about 20 feet from her family's house on Ben Hill Road in the unincorporated community of Beach Creek with her mother and grandmother. She reportedly went inside and told her three older brothers she wanted to play with her toys in the basement. But when her mother Candace Bly Wells came inside a short time later, Summer was nowhere to be found. 6.30 p.m. on June 15, 2021, Summer was reported missing to the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office. Midnight on June 16, 2021 the Tennessee State Bureau of Investigation released an endangered child alert for Summer. On June 16, 2021, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation changed the alert to an Amber Alert which is reserved for the most serious of missing children cases where a child is believed to be in imminent danger. On June 17, 2021, investigators asked anyone who lives on or near Ben Hill Road to check their trail cameras, surveillance footage and outbuildings for any sign of summer. On June 17, 2021, search teams said steep dangerous terrain including dense canopy coverage and ground cover were hampering their efforts, poor cell phone service was also making it difficult for them to communicate. On June 18, 2021, Summer's father Donald Wells spoke to the media, saying he was at work when Summer went missing. Summer Wells' home surrounded by dense forest so the family lives in the middle of the wilderness. Downtown Rogersville Photos showing parts of Rogersville and adjacent areas Summer was afraid of black bears in the forest and therefore did not dare to walk alone in the forest. Three main theories can be considered in the Summer Wells case, one that the parents through negligence had caused her death and that the family conspired to hide this fact for the authorities by hiding Summer's corpse so the parents Donald and Candius didn't lose the parenthood for their remaining three children so they ended up in foster care. The second theory is that she was abducted by a stranger, either a pedophile or a mentally disturbed person or a childless person or couple that had a strong urge to possess and rise its own child. The third theory that she wandered away and was lost in the woods is unlikely as it is usually toddlers that get lost that way not five years old. The area is sparsely populated and without any main roads for a kidnapper to quickly get away on. The police placed the whole area under a lockdown to stop eventual kidnappers to get away with summer and it is to be assumed that the police have a good overview of all residents' location and activities in the area at the time summer disappeared. Now that so much time has passed since summer disappeared and none of the three first alternatives have been strengthened and lead to a conclusion. A fourth alternative may be considered namely that summer has been taken by a carnivore, the only carnivore in Hawkins County that can take children are coyotes. They usually will avoid humans but they may lose their shyness and respect for humans if they find ample and continuous food supplies at some properties such as larger amounts of leftovers of pet feeding and copious amounts of food waste in unsecured garbage containers. Sniffer dogs had followed Summer's smell down the dog trail which alludes that the coyotes after attacking Summer dragged her down the dog trail and deep into the woods after being disturbed by the activities of searching parties crisscrossing the forest in search for Summer, the coyotes may have dragged her deeper and deeper into the woods and finally hidden her corpse in dense bush inaccessible to searching parties. Summer Wells' home is isolated in the middle of a large forest area with lots of wild animals, two of which like coyotes and black bears could pose a danger to Summer if she was out on the property unattended.
The mother said that Summer was afraid of black bears. Wells' family had 13 dogs on the property when Summer disappeared, feeding these may have attracted coyotes to the property by the dogs leaving a lot of leftovers which the coyotes supplied themselves with. Accustomed to the property the coyotes would stop being shy towards the Wells family and by keeping the Wells family under surveillance hidden in the forest edge, the coyotes may have chosen Little Summer as a suitable prey and decided to take her at an appropriate occasion when she was out alone. If a pack of coyotes took Summer and ate her up what little that remained of her would then be devoured by scavengers like turkey vulture, black vulture, American crow, red-tailed hawk, bobcat and Virginia opossum. Usually the coyote goes for the throat when attacking sheep. Very few children are registered killed by coyotes because in the vast majority of cases when a coyote tries to run away with a child the attempt is stopped by family members or others nearby. If a coyote succeeds in dragging a child deep into the forest or shrubbery and no one is to see it and intervene, the coyotes will eat up the child and scavengers will eat up the remains, the child will be registered as missing without a trace by police and the case ends up in unsolved. There are many cases of children who disappear without a trace for families who have been camping and hiking in forests and mountain areas, in such cases there is a great possibility that a mountain lion or coyote has run away with the child, the child is then never found because it has been completely eaten up by the carnivore. One example is the case of the two-year-old Dor Coons Jr. from Idaho Falls, who disappeared traceless on July 10, 2015, while on a family camping trip at the Timber Creek Campground in the Salmon Chalice National Forest in Idaho, Dor was most likely snatched by a wolf, coyote or mountain lion. The tale of Little Red Riding Hood reflects a time when wolves and other canines posed a great threat to people living in the countryside, especially children who were shepherds and who went on errands on country roads, thousands of whom were taken each year by wild canids. Can the fate of Summer Wells be compared to a modern Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale, but that ended badly as Little Red Riding Hood was eaten up? Pictures I have made where I imagine Summer Wells as a Little Red Riding Hood, Grandma Candy is present in the second picture. In the past, wild canids posed a major threat to humans and domestic animals such as the legendary Beast of Gavadin, a man-eating canine which terrorized the former province of Gavadin, in the Marjoride Mountains of south-central France between 1764 and 1767. The attacks covered an area spanning 90 by 80 kilometers, 56 by 50 miles. Most descriptions from the period identify the beast as a very large wild dog, or wolf-dog hybrid at the size of a calf or a cow, with a flattened snout, pointed ears, a wide mouth, and a broad chest. The beast's tail was reported to have been notably long with a prominent tuft at the end. The beast's fur was described as russet in color but its back was streaked with black and a white heart-shaped pattern on its underbelly. The Kingdom of France used a considerable amount of money and manpower to hunt the beast, including the resources of several nobles, soldiers, royal huntsmen, and civilians. A 1987 study estimated there had been 610 attacks, resulting in 500 deaths and 49 injuries, 98 of the victims killed were partly eaten. The beast was reported killed several times before the attacks finally stopped. In the afternoon on 27 October 2009 the 19-year-old Canadian folk singer Taylor Mitchell was killed by coyotes while hiking alone at Cabot Trail, Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia in Canada. She was in the middle of a solo East Coast concert tour of the Maritime Provinces of Canada promoting her debut album, For Your Consideration. During downtime between two concerts, she decided to go walking on the Cape Breton Highlands National Park Skyline Trail. An American couple returning to the car park passed Taylor near the beginning of the Skyline Trail. 
Shortly afterwards the American couple encountered two aggressive coyotes walking towards them on the trail path, the couple had to move aside to avoid the coyotes. Six minutes later the couple heard disturbing sounds of animal cries mixed with human screams which came from the direction of the trail where the coyotes and Taylor had last been seen. The American couple went quickly to the car park to call for help and they encountered four hikers and informed them of what they had heard. The four hikers set off towards the trail, they found Taylor's scattered possessions and a trail of blood and torn clothing, finally they came to a washroom with a large pool of blood. Taylor lay in a nearby clearing with one coyote still standing over her, the four hikers charged the coyote several times before it relented. Then the mounted police arrived and fired a gunshot in its direction at which point it fled. Taylor had lost extraordinary amounts of blood and was barely conscious, there were bites all over her body, particularly serious wounds on her legs and head, although she was alive and conscious when she was discovered she did not survive her injuries. Several extremely aggressive coyotes were killed by park officials during the next month, including one female that was acting aggressively, three of the five animals killed were connected to the attack on Taylor by traces of blood on their coats and other forensic evidence. Video clips of aggressive coyote behavior, those who want to see the whole videos can search for the titles on YouTube. with yet another coyote attack in a Moraga neighborhood. It's the fourth one in the same area in just the past seven months. This latest encounter happened near the intersection of Calle La Montana and Campo Lindo Drive. KPI X5's Don Ford on how it happened. 
shouting, no dog, no dog, three-year-old Callie arrives home with her mother from the Children's Hospital in Oakland. Doctors tended to three bite wounds across her back, her buttocks, and her legs. Callie's mom, Jackie, is shocked by the attack. I had a stroller and the baby, and I heard her scream, and I turned around, and she was literally though right next to me, and there was a coyote biting her. So I screamed, and I yelled, and the coyote retreated, but it didn't go far. And I kept screaming and yelling and waving a blanket and screaming and jumping, mm -hmm. and it would come right back at us and leave and come right back at us and leave, and it really was not scared off by me at all. A neighbor heard the screams and got the girls inside. Too late for Callie. Jackie says the wounds will heal, but... I am very shaken up, as is Callie. It's, it's very scary. I never thought a coyote would attack when a child is right next to their parent. A neighbor took this photo moments after the attack as a coyote moved up the street. Police. Now, here are some of the details on the other coyote attacks. Back in July, a young boy was bitten at Moraga Commons Park. Investigators determined that same coyote later bit a man running at Camp Alindo High School in early December. Then, about two weeks after that, the same animal, they think, bit a store clerk outside Diablo Foods in Lafayette. A Chula Vista dad breathing a sigh of relief after his four-year-old daughter survived a coyote attack outside the family home. ABC 10 News reporter John Horn explains this is the latest brush with the coyote in that part of the county. Uh, we're about to go out with a few family friends. But Faith Omubajesu's Saturday night plans changed moments after he saw what lurked on the asphalt outside his Chula Vista home. When I noticed that there was a coyote in the middle of the road, just staring at us. Specifically, the coyote had its eyes on Faith's four-year-old daughter, Isabella. And by the time dad could yell for everyone to get back inside, surveillance footage shows the wild animal blowing past him, its teeth breaking the skin on Isabella's little arm. I went after it and it ran away. And I, I, I had to make sure that it's far enough. Uh, from, uh, and then I came back and grabbed my daughter, took her in called 911. The Chula Vista Fire Department responded, paramedics taking Isabella to Rady Children's Hospital, where she got a tetanus shot and is now on a series of rabies vaccinations. While she'll be okay physically, Faith says his daughter is having second thoughts about playing outside. She thought it was a monster. She was like, it was a monster. I'm like, no, it's a coyote. Faith's now what started as a walk with her dog for one young girl in the Scarborough neighborhood turned into a traumatic experience when she was chased down right here by a coyote. The small dog bravely tries to fight off the coyote to save the girl. It survived but was badly wounded. A neighbor's security cameras captured the entire distressing attack. We do want to warn you, the video you're about to see is hard to watch. Right there, that's where I stopped and I saw the coyote walking towards us. And I was like, oh no. So I ran, but my dog wasn't coming with me. So I dropped the leash and I ran all the way on the sidewalk and started screaming. 10 year old Lily Kwan says her Yorkie Macy came to her defense, resulting in extensive injuries to her body. Weighing just 10 pounds, Macy barks back at the coyote while Lily runs away. Macy is now being treated in the ICU for eight to 10 nasty bite wounds, but is expected to make a full recovery. It's heartbreaking. We rescued her five years ago, and you know, to see her put her life in danger saving my child is just, you know, it's heartbreaking. Education is great but uh, handing us a pamphlet and telling us, you know, what to do and what not to do is not going to help any of us if we encounter a coyote that is aggressive. They say the attack isn't indicative of coyote behavior as a whole, but feeding the animals can change their behaviors, and it's been a long-standing problem in the area. That is the absolute worst thing that you can do, um, certainly for the coyote. A Calgary woman spent Friday night in the hospital after running into a coyote in her driveway. She's recovering from a nasty bite. and Nicole Al was just doing what she always does, keeping a close eye on her kids playing in their cul-de-sac. But on Friday, something else was keeping a close eye on her. I felt something grab my leg, 
I didn't know what it was. The video captured from her home surveillance camera shows the scary scene in HD. A coyote appears in the top right of the screen and then it attacks. It just jerked and tugged really hard. The bite kept getting harder and harder. I just couldn't get it off. Eventually, the animal Lee hasn't worked. She spent the night in emergency and received tetanus and rabies immunizations. She's back out on the driveway 48 hours later, but now it's not only her kids she's looking out for. They're here for food. Nine-year-old Madeline Fowler loves living in the country in her advance home. There's room to run and play with the dogs, but it comes with risks too. I had to get five rabies shots. I have to get four more on Sunday. A coyote, as big as the family's black lab, attacked Madeline outside her home Thursday. I turned around the corner. I saw the coyote at my mom's car and I had to run back. It was pulling my skirt. It was pulling my pants. Madeline's mom, April, saw the attack from near this door. She ran to Madeline and did the only thing she could think of. Whacked him on the butt. She got Madeline inside while the coyote got away. It just trotted off into the other houses. Madeline has some serious bruises. I have a couple scratches on my back and my leg and my face. She didn't need stitches and she's lucky it wasn't worse. I am so happy that it did not get my eye because if it popped my eyeball out, Oh my gosh. The family thinks the coyote was going after one of the dogs. They've lost pets that way before. Coyotes have killed their chickens, one of their cats, even a pony. I've a three-year-old girl is recovering today after being attacked by a coyote at, of all places, a beach. Little Elodie was enjoying a family vacation on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, stargazing on the beach when the attack happened. We just heard a blood-curdling scream. Mom and Megan Lewis says her husband out. scooped up Elodie and they all Jesus. fled to the car. It was stalking us the entire way up the cars. It was, it was less than three feet away from me. I thought it was a dog when it first happened, but then I saw it in the seagrass and it was just staring at us. And get this, the coyote is thought to be the same beast that attacked a woman on Cape Cod last month. There's a lady getting attacked by a coyote out here. Marcy Sterlis says she tried everything to chase away the coyote. I was like saying, get out of here, go, go. Go on, get out of here. I was terrified. She was rescued when two guys on a boat came close to shore, made a loud noise, and pulled her aboard. It sounds like the coyote was pretty close to killing your daughter. I'm, like, very aware. Sorry. We're aware of what it, what it could have been. A park ranger found the coyote 15 minutes later and shot him to death. We've had problems for the past couple of weeks. We were texting with the farm across the street that the coyotes keep coming in and pushing the horses up this way. I think they've been waiting for an opportunity. And Sunday afternoon, a pack of coyotes made their move, attacking K.O. Carmen, an 1,100-pound horse with the Lapeer County Sheriff's Mounted Unit. Really successful horse, and then in her older years, we used her as a, a training aid to our mounted unit. So when I'd need to train one of my new younger horses, we'd always go out with her because she's been there and done that. She's just rock steady, and she was the leader of the pack. If that horse had been out with the rest of it, wouldn't have happened. But being a single horse, they ganged up and they brought her down. Deputy Callie Myers has had K.O. Carmen for 21 years, and she says the coyotes around her farm in rural northern Oakland County have been growing more bold. Well, sure. it's been escalating over the last year. Every chicken and duck we have is dead. If Summer Wells reappears in a few years, she might look like this age-progressed painting I have made.